We're starting a little bit later today than I would like to normally. Uh, there's not much light left, but there is some, so we're gonna use it. Uh, my hope for today was to kind of make a plan of what we're gonna do with the front clip and the skyline, uh, like how we're gonna, I wanna map out all of the spot welds that we need to take out. I wanna go through and, and mark them all out so that I can kind of see how many there is and how I might get at them um, on the skyline and on the front clip itself. I think the front clip's probably gonna be a lot easier than the skyline uh, because we can just flip it up on its top. James Squanish, can you help me? That was a little spooky. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, that was weird. That was sketchy. There we go. Oh, scary noises. Yeah, it's, it, but it's pretty stable. Yeah, sure. Thang. <laughs> I guess we're not going to start off with marking out the, the spot welds quite yet because Sam Squanch started doing some measuring on the this guy, the, the, the front clip, and on the skyline. And we made some really interesting finds. Just like the easiest thing I could think of to measure was just to pick spots that were, you know, easy to see. So the first thing that I measured was uh, shock tower to shock tower, and it's just spot on, 34 inches from the very inside to inside, and that one's different. Uh, we'll show it to you in a second, we'll probably put a clip in here, but yeah. the next thing I measured from here to here, 45 and a half, and then kind of the twin to that measurement is right here. It's a little bit off, like an eighth off, but this happens, and this is probably welded on after the fact. I don't think that really is responsible for things to be straight. That looks like a brace, yeah. Yeah, like something that it's, I wouldn't expect for these to be perfect, honestly. But when I measured those on the other side, they're also different. So it looks like the so front of that is that bent that, like all the way back. Yeah, yeah. So that means that the frame rails of that car are probably bent all the way back to here, which is like part that we want to keep. Right. So. Yeah, get a shot from this side so you can see this frame rail. And what, there are some buckles we can show on your car. Like yeah, it'll yeah, be yeah. easier to compare them if you do them from the side. So on the front clip, it was 34 inches on the dot. And this is exactly a half inch off. Okay. So this is moved, or both of them are moved inward toward each other for the start, a half inch. This well, is not something I would expect to be off in a production line. Like this would be exact, I think, on every car. Mm -hmm. So then there's this stuff. See how buckled that is? all that that's straight on the other frame yep so that's evidence that there's problems here mm -hmm. this side i didn't see that but i didn't look as closely it uh, looks much this straighter this side looks pretty damn straight mm -hmm. from what i've seen right so I, you know in my mind is just the question and i think it's on your mind too is like what do we where do we start drilling uh spot welds out and what portion of the i know you have an idea what you want to take off of this so yeah there's you know like and we just proved that there's clearly plenty of frame damage and so it's probably best to take as much of of this front clip as as we comfortably can and that being said I don't know how I feel about going all the way down to here because this frame rail isn't isn't particularly like it's not very pretty but I suppose that's an option and, and maybe that's a good one. I, I really don't know. But my original plan was to, to kind of separate this seam and take out every spot weld from here around. They're all, they're all back here, I think. 
<laughs> but like all these dudes, everything here around, all these weird braces, most of this from what we've found would probably have to come off. Um, this guy would probably have to come off and then I think somewhere around there, once we did that on both sides, we'd be able to take the majority of the front clip and the frame rails out of this. This, uh, this firewall shell chunk. Like Samson said earlier, we got no clue what we're doing. But this is like, this is what my, my, my heads came up with so far. This is not something that you're supposed to be doing. It's interesting, I didn't realize any of this, but there are stacks of like, this is a layer, that's mm -hmm. a layer, that's a layer. Yeah. This is a layer that's folded in between and the metal is much, much thicker than, than this. It's like probably three times as thick like for the strut tower. So it's really kind of intricate. It's pretty neat. But like here's a whole other layer and here's a piece and it's just like all these pieces spot welded together to make this frame. And the, the metal is surprisingly thin on all this stuff. Not to say it's not strong, I'm sure it is. It's just, just pretty wild how it's all put together. So we just gotta pick the right things to take apart. And what that is is a mystery. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit scary, but. <laughs> I um like as scary as it is, the more I look at it, the more com comfortable in a way I feel about the whole thing. Seems plausible. Seems seems very possible actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're definitely gonna have to be careful and and very thoughtful about how we go about it. Now, to make sure that we reattach this front clip straight. <laughs> onto the onto the actual skyline. Um, I have I have a strut bar for a skyline over there from my buddy Jordan. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> the hope is to connect the strut bar, uh, like the brackets for the strut bar, onto here, and then take off the the actual strut bar piece, and then make some brackets that connect the shock towers together, but also connect to the firewall, and then. I was talking to my buddy Seth, Seth with the SR20 swapped Laurel, uh, we saw a while ago, and he was saying that we should also tie it into the frame rails, and I was like, damn, that's a great idea. So we're gonna we're gonna try to do that too. We're gonna basically try to make a strut brace that connects to every point, every hole <laughs> on the front clip and the chassis. For possible the, for the purpose of like making a jig so we make sure that when we put it back first of all it stays all together but also we can we can check to see how different or how much the same there yeah this so this fits really nicely across this one and it's not I mean, gonna fit it's a half an inch off try to be surprised about that but it's it's quite a bit off on the other so yeah that's a, I never would have thought of that that's a really good idea Seth kind of knows his stuff yeah Seth's he's done some frame repair before and so, yeah, he's, he's pretty knowledgeable in that. And I was a big fan of that idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. I didn't quite get it at first, but just the idea that you have measurements to all these little points that yeah, really increase yeah. your so confidence. So you'd have, you'd have stuff to going to here and to here and to like, I don't know, over here. Wherever like, you can stick a bolt. Exactly, and you'd stick all the bolts through so that hopefully when you reattach this whole front end onto the, the new car, it's it's aligned as best as it can be. Probably hold it there while you weld it and keep it from moving while it gets heated and you know, give That'd you confidence great. that it fits the same and mm -hmm. like, all kinds of good stuff. Yeah. It's a good idea. It's gonna take a bit to make that, but it'll be a, it'll be a crazy looking piece. <laughs> <laughs> Skyline jig. Skyline jig. Also, I, uh, I was thinking maybe if we could make the brace go all the way to the transmission mount, cause that would be solid. Like if we made a, a little transmission mount that the brace came all the way down to, mm -hmm. it would be... You would know it's aligned yeah. as well as this is. pretty confident. Yeah, we hope that the fellow we brought this, bought this thing from was really a cool guy. And, and he was his awesome. understanding... Um, UP Garage, it's in Washington. Right. They well, build like some of the gnarliest skylines I think they're doing stuff for Tommy and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So. But um, the, the guy we first talked to who sold it to UP Garage, 
was the original guy who got this frame. True. And he said it was pristine when he got it. So it looked like it had never been. I mean, I don't see any evidence of crash damage at all. The worst thing about it is some, you know, stupid jack stand shit and, and rust. So uh, it should be straight. And if we make, make it fit that as well as it fits here, I don't see what the problem could be. Seems like it should be okay. Yeah. It'll be fine. It's gonna be just fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> we got this. No problem. Mm -hmm. So we marked out like a, a handful, like I don't know, a couple dozen uh, uh, spot welds under and around the chassis, but or around the the front clip. But there's a lot of undercoat and and whatnot that we need to remove first. And we'll probably also go over a lot of these dudes when we're taking that undercoat and stuff off. So we hit the pause button on that. And we're back to measuring stuff. It occurred to me that whatever the angles of all this stuff is, the measurements between the corner of the strut tower and the frame rail on both sides probably would be identical or very, very close to it. So I. He's gonna check those, and I mean, you know, these measurements are just, you know, kind of guessy. About, like right to the seam is about 31 and three quarters. And this measurement, as best I can do it, 32 and a half. Ooh. <laughs> so, I already did them over here, and they're exactly the same, 32 and an eighth. This Whoa. arrangement is not okay. <laughs> Yo, homie. So, yeah. It coincides with what we were told, is that the frame is definitely jumbled. And so that means that this is not anything, we don't want to keep any of it. I was kind of hoping, because there's not rust on this one and there's a little rust on that one. It needs to change, like probably all the way back. Like so here's saying. what I was going to say to your whole rust thing. Uh huh. This whole panel is good. Like it's there. Take out all the spot welds, take out the panel. Oh, and replace the panel. And replace the panel. Gosh, you are a smart guy. Okay, I love that. Okay. Perfect. That's cool, that's good enough. Hopefully you guys are cool with that. Comment down below. <laughs> so what Jonas was just saying, I'm freaking out a little bit about the rust back here. It's a great idea, is that if we have this all jigged up so we know everything is straight, there's no reason why we can't take out this piece and replace it with the one from the skyline that has no rust. Even if we have to move it a little bit, it's totally fine because we'll know everything's straight because of the jig. So that'll fix the rust problem and that's pretty freaking cool. Hooray. Wow. It's it feeling hopeful. No, I, I know, right? right? It's like we're- <laughs> That's kind of nice. We're fighting the dragon and he's not as scary as we thought. <laughs> Yeah, you, Yet. Just, you just wait. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't look like it goes in. This is a problem, but that this all looks pretty good. Yeah. Which is that's the part we the don't want to mess could, with. Yeah, that's the part we could replace, but mm -hmm. the Okay, cool. Yay. 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 I don't like rust. I don't know how you guys in the Midwest handle this crap. No, this no, is no, no. terrible. No, rust belt people, like, hats props. off. I wouldn't do cars. <laughs> I wouldn't quit. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. We Horses. I, yeah. I, <laughs> nah. I know. Nah, I think I just, like, keep doing other things. What's up, dude? Wrong place, bro. Sorry. Leave him alone. You're a good boy, Wallace. That's a good leave it. Good leave it, Wallace. <laughs> leave it. You can look at him. Just leave him alone. Just leave him alone, bud. You're a good boy. Burb. Alright, so it's now um completely dark. <laughs> So I think this is where we're, we're going to leave the video off. <laughs> yep. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully in the next video, <laughs> I'll be going to the store and uh, getting some inch uh, tubing so that we can start making 
a, a really, really wild strut tower brace that hopefully will help us keep this guy straight when it goes on this guy. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We can make it complicated. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. It's all good, man. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. And uh, leave a comment, leave a like, and s subscribe. See you again. Bye. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Man, that was... Yeesh. Rust chunks. Oh, did I just hit him? It sounded a little, maybe like he did. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, he looks super upset about it. <sighs> that guy, he tries to catch it sometimes. Yeah.